Hi guys, Alex here from Mud Clay Play in Byron Bay. Um, I'm here to do another little isolation tutorial uh, for you, our fortnightly tutorial. Um, so what we're going to be making today is actually some mugs. Um, these, I know I've done mugs before but we're not gonna be using the slab technique. So these mugs are for people that actually like um, a bit more curvature for uh, what they like to drink their tea and coffee out of in the morning. So we're gonna be using a pinch technique for these mugs. Um, and as per usual, I'm gonna go through the tools that you need. Uh, so what I'd recommend is having like a breadboard um, or similar. Uh, so that you can actually put your finished piece on there when we're done so it can dry and then we also want our tools so we've got um, our joining tool just here you can see that the curvature um, right there actually assists us to join bodies of clay together um, we've got our scoring tool here this is also a winner for joining it allows us to create a uneven and porous surface on two bodies of clay to lock them together and this one I mean this is a trimming tool but let's be honest I usually just use it for decorating so we can do some little grooves and things in our mugs after I'll show you a couple of different techniques but this one is great for that um, I've got my spray bottle as I always do um, you don't have to have a spray bottle you can just have a dish of water doesn't matter um, I mean I've got this but I don't know whether we're gonna need it yet I haven't decided I haven't actually decided I've also got a little knife just in case um, I need it but I often use this for cutting as well if you don't have tools and you want them you can get them um, from the website once again www.mudbarrenbay.com we've got the tutorials uploaded there we've also got um, packs that you can buy during ISO well not during ISO just because um, so you're also going to need your clay we use a BRT uh, mid-fire clay this is one that has um, a trachyte in it so the freckle that you see um, that comes through the white glaze which is really quite lovely and this is really good to work with this is a really good hand building clay to work with um, apart from looking great uh, it, it actually allows you to um, build things relatively easily whereas um, some other clays are a bit more um, touchy to work with so that's pretty much everything that you're gonna need for now um, if you want to make more than one ball you can see my ball here um, it's not too big so the balls that I have rolled for you guys if you've bought them on the website are really quite large you're only really gonna need like a quarter of that per um, maybe a tiny bit more her mug so if you're going to be making more than one you want to roll out however many balls um, first because the um, the grim part is if you make your perfect cup that you love um, then it's really hard to replicate it because you don't know how much clay you used in the first place so make sure that you know you want to make four you're rolling out four balls um, you're going to need less clay than what you think you're going to need for these um, a lot of people make the mistake of grabbing a bunch of clay and then basically making a bowl, a pinch bowl, instead of making um, the cup that they're aiming for. So, um, I mean, I don't even, I'm just going to show you in reference to my hand um, how big that is. So it's not much and I might even need to take a little bit of clay out of that, um, depending on how big I want my mug to be. But, um, I'm just going to make the one for now so if you need to make more than one do that now grab your um, grab your clay roll it into a ball um, and the way we're rolling our clay into a ball some people use um, their hands like this some people do it on uh, a board I just I just slap it together I just slap it um, in my palms here and I keep on turning it and twisting it around and eventually it creates like a sphere. Um, and you can see I don't have any cracks in that sphere. I've just kind of kept on working with it. Anything that you make as well is going to reduce about 20% in the kiln. So once the moisture has wicked away um, from the clay, it does uh, shrink. 
So it's not gonna shrink a crazy amount. 20% isn't as much as what you think it is. So you don't need your bowl to be like, um, your bowl. You don't need your cup to be this big. You can just have it just ever so slightly larger than what you actually want it to um, turn out like. So keep on doing this. You've got all your tools. You're good to go. Then what I'm gonna get you to do once you've got something similar to this is place your thumb in the center, just like this, and then you're going to press it three quarters the way down. Maybe a little more, just slightly more than three quarters of the way down. So you've basically got a hole in it like this. Now the motion that we're going to use to actually pull the clay up and out is just this here. So if I'm pinching it, I'm just pinching it and I'm pulling my finger up, twisting, pinch, pull up, twist, pinch, pull up. And I'm not applying too much pressure when I'm pinching. I'm on quite the angle here. Um, I'm just pulling clay from the bottom and pulling it up gently. And I'm just going to continue that motion and continue twisting that. So you want to make sure as best you can that the walls of your pinch pot are the same thickness. Um, so you want to be mindful of that when you're doing this. And how you're holding this part here um, is going to determine the shape of your vessel. So you, it can kind of come up a bit more, it can come out a bit more, it doesn't matter. Um, it's whatever kind of you want it to be. And mine's cracking quite a bit, that's okay. I'm gonna sort that out in a minute. I kind of want mine to be a bit wider, I think. So I'm gonna pull, pull it at, at the top a little bit more. And just keep on pulling out like that. So I do want my mug. I often make ones, I mean the language of my hands is really just to pull it up and keep on pulling it up. So my mugs can be quite tall and I actually quite like the, um, I actually quite like the wider, mugs so I'm just going to keep on pinching and I am pushing I'm pushing out here so I'm continually pushing out because that's kind of the shape that I want to go for and I'm twisting it because I want to continue to work the um, wider parts of the clay or the fatter parts of the clay and now I'm just you can see that I'm just pinching really gently and I'm being quite mindful of where the thicker parts are because they're the sections that I do want to work on. If there's a thin section, you don't want to continue to press that thin section because you're just going to make it thinner. So just by me doing this motion, um, I'm actually able to feel how uh, thick or thin the sections of clay are. So mine's... Um, cracking a bit at the top so I'm just going to go through um, how to nurture out the cracks so you can see really normal it's cracked a reasonable amount at the top I'm just going to spray my fingers the reason I'm not spraying directly onto the body of clay is because it's hard for me to um, you know it's easy for me to saturate the clay and I don't want to do that I just it's hard for me to take the water off once I've already put it on so you can see here, I'm just I'm I'm not just kind of going like this with my finger. I'm pressing those little sections of clay together with my fingers, and I'm just continuing around. As you're working with the clay, you are stressing it out a little bit. Um, you're just wicking moisture away from it. You're pulling and bending it so naturally, like us. You know, it becomes a little bit stressed, and we just have to put some attention there. Again, a bit of water on the hands, or you can dip your hands into a little water dish. And just... So this is still quite thick, so I'm going to continue to pull and pinch until I've got a size and thickness that I am happy with. So you might find that you've got um, a thicker base than the sides. You can still use your finger 
to pull clay from the bottom up to the side so you can remove some of the thickness from the bottom. Keep on pinching. The thickness we're aiming for, I mean, it's up to you, but you certainly don't want it to be um, any thicker than kind of 0.5 of a centimeter. Because that is, I mean, that's gonna be a heavy mug, you know? It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's more likely to um, crack if it's too thick or too thin, so. What I'm doing now is I'm just applying a bit of pressure to the bottom here so I can pull it out and reshape it. So with my thumb in the middle, I'm just applying pressure to where I want the clay to go. So this is quite a big mug. And I've got many a crack, so if you've got cracks, don't worry. We just are going to put our attention there in a tick. my attention there once I'm happy with my shape and thickness and I'm going to keep a little bit of thickness to the walls because I also want enough clay so that I can um, do a little decoration I think I want to do a decoration yeah I'm going to do a decoration I'll show you guys how to do that it's pretty simple Pretty simple. But there's really nothing better than um, sipping out of a cup that you made yourself. And yeah, just be gentle with it. It's not a race, so you know you can just really take your time with this one. And if it starts to dry out a bit, a bit of water on the fingers, and it's really um, normal to have an irregular, bit of an irregular um, top. Mine's not too bad. It's slightly irregular in parts. So I'm not gonna continue to pinch um, up parts that are already the thickness that I want because then I am gonna be making them thinner. You see this part here is um, slightly higher. So I'm actually going to pull some of this clay down really gently, just so I can level out that lip. I mean, you might, you might like your lip to be a little bit irregular, that's fine. You know, it's your cup, have it however you want. But I kind of, I wanna, you know, really practice making the tops of my cups quite the same thickness, but also the same height. So I'm pulling clay down now instead of pulling it up and I'm just nurturing out the cracks as they arrive. And if you want some tunes whilst you're doing this, I highly recommend um, Mud Fridays or Isoclation on the Mud Clay Play um, Spotify playlist. Absolute bangers. I think it's like, maybe, maybe they go for like two hours a piece. Sit forever and listen. They're my finest work. So what I'm doing is I'm just leveling out the lip here. And one thing that you can do um, if you're struggling with that a little bit is just take your um, cup if you want it leveled out like once again if you want it leveled out and you just kind of a little bit so you can get that quite perfect and then that will show you where um, your thicker parts are around here and so now I know that I can I know which sections to actually pull a little bit of clay back down I can just work on that for a little bit. Oh, 
this always um makes me feel much less stressed i must say unless it's not working or it breaks or something Now, if you've made a section too thin, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to get rid of everything you've done. Um, I mean, this is kind of not really allowed, but you just pull a um, section of your clay. You know, if you want to add a bit of thickness just kind of like that, spray it, score it, and then um, add it to the section that, that you've accidentally made a little bit too thin. Um, that's not, you know, you're not really supposed to do that, but oh well, <laughs> who cares. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, the only thing that I'm not so happy with, um, I just, I've got some crackage around, okay? So, a bit of water on the fingers and then I'm just gonna use my finger in a circular motion. I'm not gonna press too hard because then I'm gonna be warping the shape that I'm making. Um, if you ever need to press hard, then you actually want to, um, on one side, you wanna be supporting with one hand and then on the other side, you can um, massage out the cracks. But at the moment, I'm not really needing to do that. I can just turn it on its head and start to do that little massage work in the circular motion. My clay's a little bit dry now on the outside, so I need to use a, a, just a tiny bit more water. Less is more with water. Um, as I was saying before, if you use too much, um, it just gets like muddy and it's too, it's much too hard to work with. It can become quite floppy. So that's really not what you want. Just continue that action. And these are wonky mugs. They're not supposed to be perfect. So, you know, whoops, I pressed that a bit too. Hard just then. These are supposed to have a little bit of warmth to it, so that's fine. If it isn't perfect, and also, you know, I've said this before like, one thing I love about clay and hand building in particular is you just have to really um, learn to drop your expectations with things and you know how you want something to specifically look because it's not really going to look like that it's just not most of the time especially when you're learning like it's just going to look however it comes out and a lot of the time it's awesome and if you're too hung up on it looking in a you know, like a really particular way, then you kind of lose, you just lose the ability to be able to see what you actually have, how good it is, the thing that you actually have made in front of you. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to um, put a little bit of a bottom in the base, like that. Um, and I also, with my lip, you think of um, any of the cups that you are usually drinking out of, the lip um, has that, that real curvature on it so that um, it's quite comfortable for you to drink out of. The way that I do that is I just again put a little bit of water on my fingers and I create a little V shape there and then I just gently, gently go around the whole cup. And this allows me to um, create the width of the lip that I'm actually happy with. I don't want it to be pointy. I just want it to have that comfortable sip.
So you can see there. Oh, got to get rid of that. So you can see there. I've made that thinner so that it's nice to actually sip out of. It's all right. And I've gotten rid of most of my cracks here. And you can see all of my little thumb prints in it. I like that, so and that's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'll just pull that out a little bit more, make that level. I'm just going to check that I actually have made it relatively level. going and you can um, just have it like this so it's just a sippy cup or you can put a handle on it so I don't know if I'm gonna put a handle on it or not I haven't decided yet but I am gonna do some decorating I'm gonna use this to decorate and the way I do this is I am using the curved edge here if I press too far, I'm going to push straight through the clay, so be mindful of that. And it's good to practice on another bit of clay to begin with if you haven't done this before. But I'm just going to press in and pull down, not all the way up, but nearing the top. And you can see that I've got a pretty good groove there. And I'm just going to continue that process all the way around. try to be as even as I can be with where I'm actually putting them. You can measure that out, but you know, once again, just being a bit lazy. So again, if I press too um, far in, I am going to ruin the shape. Just want to make sure I'm not doing that. Oh, also, P.S. Please, can you um, show me when you have made these creations? I just get such a kick out of it. It's like Christmas for me. You can email them to me um, if you don't feel comfortable tagging me on the gram or if you don't have Instagram. Um, I would just so, so, so love to see what you come up with and the more you do this um, you know you're gonna get like a muscle memory and you're just going to be able to make certain shapes with a lot more ease so just keep that in mind when you're making things and these are actually a little bit wonky and a bit not spaced apart like they should be but who cares it's quite cute hey love it um now any um, sharp edges you have, they're going to accentuate in the queue. And I've got a hair in my face. It's absolutely annoying me. All right, get out of it. Um, so again, sharp edges, they will accentuate in the queue. So you can just use a little bit of water on your fingers and just, I'm not gonna press these hard. I'm just going to nurture them out so that they're not so aggressive and so I don't cut myself. And I'm just trying to have a lovely cup of tea in the morning. This is really cool. 
um, like a birthday present to give to someone, you know, something that you've made. Or Christmas, whatever. Or just friendship appreciation in general. So you can see that I'm softening these out. I'm not pressing out the groove entirely. I'm just softening them out. I'm going to add a handle because I love handles and so I can show you um, especially if you haven't done the other um, boob mug what sort of handle do I want oh that's another question Ooh. should really plan these a bit more shouldn't I um, I'm just gonna do, oh, I don't know whether I wanna do like a circle handle or whether I wanna do like a big handle circle or, I'm probably just gonna do a big handle, okay? Because that's probably the most popular as well. So I'm gonna make a coil for the handle. The way you make a coil is, you know, well, my way of making a coil is just squeezing out your clay a little bit and then when you're rolling out a coil you want to really do it quite gently so you want to start from the center and then just kind of roll out pull it out and I'm doing this heaps if I was to press hard um, I'd be squashing the clay so I don't really want to do that you know going to keep going until I've got the length that I'm happy with and the thickness that I'm happy with so I don't personally you do your handle how you want to but I don't want it too thick how do you feel about that something like that that's kind of cute isn't it yeah yeah I'm happy with that all right so when you're making a handle, I've bent this, so I've just stressed it out. Um, I don't want it to crack. So I'm just going to make sure that this clay is happy and that it's all been kind of pressed together and it's okay with being bent a little bit. The way that I'm doing that is just by, yeah, running my fingers along it. So I'm gonna be attaching um, the clay to this vessel. If I was to attach it like this, with no um, extra clay on the sides, then it's not gonna go down too well for me. I'm gonna be pulling too much clay and I'll make um, the very ends of uh, the handle too thin. So I'm just gonna be adding little feet right now. All I mean by that is, oh, excuse me. I'm just gonna be pulling out the clay like this. So I've got extra clay to pull on to um, the body of the shape that we've just made. So you can see I've got two little feet there. Now I want to figure out where I want to put this exactly. Um, is a bit, I'm not sure, I'm not happy with that. I don't want it to be a bit thinner, like that. Yeah, I like that more. I, I'm, I'm actually liking the thinner handle a bit more. So, I'm gonna mark where I wanna put the handles. 
so I know where I'm scoring. Now the scoring is just making that rough edge, not edge, but making the um, surface of the clay rough like that, where I want to add the handle. Um, when you're joining handles, you want to make sure that you're actually making both of the surfaces that you're trying to join porous because there's no use in doing one you want to lock both of them in together um, the other thing that we need to do is make a little bit of slip slip is just mud toothpaste consistency mud so i've just grabbed a little bit of clay you can grab one of your scraps and just press the clay into the water until it combines. And again, just a bit of a toothpaste consistency. We're just gonna use this as our glue. You're not gonna need much of it. You're just joining a handle. So just gonna add that there and then add that there. I haven't got much on there. I've only got like a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to be pressing Again, because I'm pressing, I'm, I'm putting my hand on one end and then the other hand on the other to press that in. Now you can see that this is a little bit long. I actually really love that, um, but some people might want it to be a bit wider. This is just me. Um, now I'm going to use this, the curved end. I'm not going to hack with this end. I'm going to, with that side, sorry, I'm going to use the curved end. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that clay onto my cup. So that's why we create the feet. If your clay, another trick to handles, if your clay is quite moist and you're doing like a long handle or something like that and it keeps on drooping down, um, you just want to create the, the shape of the handle that you want. You want to put it to one side for about 15 minutes until it uh, solidifies a little bit and then it will defy gravity. So just leave it to the side for long enough that you will actually um, be able to attach it and it will stay. Now I'm just using my finger to just trace around this just so I can smooth it out a little bit. I mean, that's cute. Look at that. Just push it up a tiny bit. I just think, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, so once you put it back down and it's ready to kind of go through its first drying phase, it's just greenware at the moment, so it's just mud. Um, I'm just gonna make sure my handle's not gonna crack again. Um, so, yeah, you just want to put it inside out of the elements. If you don't put it inside, it's likely to crack. So you just want to put it out of the elements. It'll probably take a week to dry-ish. And you can go onto the website, www.mudbarandbay.com and have a look um, at the kiln location section. And then you'll be able to figure out what kilns are close to you. Um, and yeah, give them a call. Tell them that you've got a BRT mid-fire clay that you're looking to get fired. You do not want to glaze your piece until you've fired it once. You fire it the first time, then you can glaze it, and then you do your second firing, which is your glaze firing. So just keep that in mind. Um, some people will get excited and they glaze their work immediately, and uh, no, you can't do that. I mean, you can, it's just not going to work. So. How cute is that? Can't wait to see yours, to be quite honest. All right. So you can do flat handles. You can do whatever handle you want and you can just make it your own. But yeah, you can do more than one. You can create a family. Be so cute. All right. If there's anything in particular you want, let me know and I can do a tutorial on it if I know how to make it. 
Um, thank you so much for doing this ice equation with me. Um, and yeah, love to see what you come up with and really love and appreciate your support. Thank you. Bye.